Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Jeannie. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Today we're going to chat about something that happened this morning. But let me give you a little bit of a backstory because I feel like this was an answer to a prayer. I have really been struggling with finding motivation to get things done. Now, from a human design perspective, I don't have any motors to find. I especially don't have an ego center to find, which is the center of like willpower. And I'm like, it would really be nice <laughs> to have some like willpower definition because like I've been on the struggle bus for I don't know how long. Now, if you're familiar with my journey, you know, like I've been going through a grief journey for the past couple of years. Yes, years. And although there has been like more movement forward, like I'm learning to make more moves and things like that, like with work is one of the places where I am still struggling. So I was having this conversation with God where I'm like, you know what? I'm no longer available to be behind on bills like I currently have been. And what I do notice happens is that many times <laughs> it's like, a, I feel like something needs to get done or like it comes into my awareness that there's something that needs to be tended to, but I tend to put it off and I put it off and I put it off. And then because I put it off, God, life, universe, however you want to see it, <laughs> starts creating an external source of pressure for me to get moving and yes things get done and you know in the end it all works out but in the moment like I don't like it. it's not my favorite form because it feels chaotic and it feels out of control and I don't like it I don't love it so I see the pattern where it's like okay she's not gonna do it on her own let's help her you know get this sorted out so I was talking to God about this the other day. I'm like, you know what? Like, I just really like, I don't feel motivated to do work. And I know like it's, it's, it's stuff that's going to get done sooner or later. I either like work through it or get rid of it. And I don't want to get rid of it. So my other solution is like work it. So I'm like, okay, this is what I'm struggling with. I'm having trouble finding the internal will power to do this. And I know that your word says that you not only give us the desire, but also the will or the power to get things done. So that's what I want to start playing with. Like, let's experiment with like, what would it be like for me to find that internal source of willpower to get things done? So that was that conversation. And then last night when I got home from church, I came across this video. <laughs> it was this like money business coach, but they're like, um, they have, how do I say this? Like it's Christian based. Like I'm not sure if that's the, the right terminology, but like they, they bring God into the process and like the Bible and things like that. And they were sharing about like three things or three ways that you like get locked into being poor or something. I mean, that's not the exact wording, but that's what I remember right now. And the first thing they said was laziness. And I was like, ooh, I kind of feel like, you know, that's me right there. So I'm like, well, wait, maybe I'm wrong. You know, but I'm like, I listened, I think I listened all the way through, but I kind of zoned out a little bit because I thought the laziness, like the guilt started, you know, compounding. So I'm like, well, maybe, you know, I'm a projector, like I don't have any motor centers to find, especially that wheel center, you know? So I'm like, okay, maybe like, wait, 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 let me, let me look up the definition of lazy, like what does that mean? And then it says like unwillingness to work and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's kind of me right now, like I don't want to work. So I'm like, okay, God, I hear you, but like, I don't know let's talk about this because like I don't like being called lazy <laughs> but I also recognize like it's kind of true yes it's true and while I may have some very valid reasons as to why I got to this state if we're reaching this new um chapter in life where we're clearing out what's left of the old so that the new can you know be established it's going to require work and effort and right now it feels like a lot because there was a lot that I 
didn't do for a very long time. So I'm like, okay, I hear you. So I went to sleep kind of feeling like really bummed out. And then this morning, um, well, actually, let's backtrack a little bit more. Yesterday, while at church, my little bestie, she's starting fourth grade this year. She's having her meet the teacher day today, the next day. And she invited me to go with them. But it was going to be like really early and I'm still not a morning person. And I, I initially said, you know what? It's just like, it's just kind of feeling like a no, so don't get your hopes up. But as I was going home, I thought, I thought about how, like how excited she felt. And I'm like, if she invited me, like it must mean something to her that I go. And that's something that like I still struggle to understand because I feel like growing up, I didn't have a lot of people show up for me. So I, while I do recognize like now if someone were to show up for me, like it makes me cry, like it does matter. But I think I convinced myself for a very long time that it didn't matter, that I didn't need it, that it wasn't that big of a deal. So I started thinking about how, like if she invited me, like she wants me there. Cause that's another thing. Like sometimes I get invitations and I'm like, Oh, they don't really mean it. Like they won't care if I don't show up or they're not going to notice if I don't show up. So I'm like, this is another thing that I've been working on. So I started thinking about, okay, how is she going to feel if, you know, I do show up? I mean, she invited me for a reason. Cause like she does other things and you know, she doesn't invite me to that stuff. So let me, I mean, I know it's going to be early, but you know, it'll be a sacrifice gives me something to do because you know I'm, I'm I'm looking and yeah I'm looking for ways to like get myself out of bed in the morning because that's still kind of challenging so last night like I changed my mind about like not going <laughs> I set my alarm for seven in the morning because I thought they were wanting to get there at eight <laughs> turns out they had planned for 8 30 so I woke up way early I managed to do a little bit of work this morning but Okay, this is the reason why I woke up early. So as I'm getting ready for the day, um, I was scrolling through TikTok just for a few minutes and I came across this video where the guy, one of the things that um, he mentioned was he cited from this um, Bible verse that says that whatever you do, do it with like all your heart as if you're working for, for God. And I'm like growing up in a very religious background, like it's not... A verse that's new to me like I've heard it before but the way it, something about like hearing it today something like shifted and it's like oh let me let me contemplate this let me think about this <laughs> whatever you do do it as if you're working for God as if you're working for the Lord and I was like oh okay what does this mean like what does it feel like to do something with all your heart as if you're working for God and I started thinking about that I'm like oh okay let's say because okay this is the other thing I realized as I was contemplating this it's like I think I've been having a hard time experiencing what the scripture calls us to experience because I'm thinking that God wants me and expects me to like run a marathon for example but what if God understands and knows because like he's my creator he knows everything about me he knows and understands that like I'm not ready to run a freaking marathon so if he doesn't expect me like that was my human brain thinking that God wants me to run a marathon but what if he knows that right now like my 15 minute walks are what I can do right now how would I take that walk with all my heart as if I were walking for the Lord? I'm like, oh, that would change things. Like I would, like the way that I would move <laughs> while taking that walk feels different. Like just by imagining it, it already feels different. And what I actually started to notice is that like as I started imagining myself taking that walk where like let's say... I tend to cap it at 15, 20, 30 minutes, an hour if I'm having like a really good head body day. I felt how like in the past it was more like, oh, I got to take this walk because I got to move my body and I know it's good for me and this is hard. It's hot outside, not my favorite season. But like, I'll, I mean, I haven't been, 
I dropped my consistency mainly because of the weather. <laughs> but I'm like, okay. I felt this shift like, oh, okay, if I go into the this walk with the mindset of like, I'm doing this with all my heart as if I'm doing it for the Lord, I felt how like I not only wanted to walk maybe like 15 minutes on a day where I'm like not really feeling it, but because I'm shifting over to doing it with all my heart and doing it f for God, I felt myself being able to walk even longer than the 15 minutes, even if it was five Five by five minutes or doubling the walk but feeling really good about it so there's I mean duh there's something about like how, how things shift and how the experience shifts and also like the results that you get from the experience when you put your whole heart into it now I do have a defined g-center so maybe this is why you know it kind of hit home now that I'm talking about it because the G center is something that like, oh, I can relate to that. Maybe not the willpower section, but like with all your heart. And I feel that like impulse to like move forward, which I hadn't felt for a really long time. So, okay. I'm having all these thoughts and then I'm like, oh, I'm in the bathroom, right? Getting ready at this point. Like, okay. I watched that video and then I put on music because I was going to start doing my face and <laughs> I've been into like an NSYNC craze since I saw a little bit of the opening of this movie that the collective is going crazy for. And um, in the opening, I haven't seen the movie, I just saw clips of this, but it starts off with the song by NSYNC, Bye Bye Bye. And also on TikTok, like I've come across uh, this video where the um, dancer, actor who does this dance talks about how he got the role and he shares how like his agent called him and he's like hey can you learn the choreography for NSYNC's bye 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 within like the next I don't know how long they gave him but it was like a time crunch and he recorded himself like practicing and getting this down and the agent's like it I can't tell you what it's for but it's big so the guy's like putting like I think he was at, at his mom's house <laughs> and he's like really like putting in the effort to learn the choreography he was struggling at some points but eventually like he got it down he sent the video and if you watched the, the opening scene of this movie that I'm talking about I don't know about y'all but like there is something about the way <laughs> that this man moves and I'm like oh my gosh like he literally like I it connects to what I was talking about he put all his heart and soul into the moves and like you can see it you can feel it so last night on my way to church like the only song that I wanted to listen to was NSYNC bye 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 <laughs> which I mean I know this is a very long story but it's so interesting you know how things unfold and that's the thing that like one it's one of my favorite things where kind of like looking back and seeing oh like the 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 trail that kind of got me here. <laughs> so anyways, this morning, I'm like, I feel like, I feel called to like, just listening to NSYNC. So I put NSYNC on Spotify. And as I'm getting ready, and I'm having this thought of like, you know, what would it be like if I started working as if like God hired me? He's my boss. And technically, like he's been my boss the entire time. But like, it just clicked you know, within me on a whole different level. So I'm like, okay, what would it be like? Like if I really worked and did things as if I were doing them for God. And as I'm having this thought, I kind of <laughs> zoomed out a little bit and I started listening to the song that's playing. And I, I started listening right at the place where this lyric is saying, um, I'm so excited to see you excited. And I haven't felt excited in a very long time. It's one of the things that comes with grief, especially when you lose so much of your world and you get so stuck in the past without realizing. It's kind of like this dance between like being stuck in the past and being afraid of the future, which I'm not going to go into right now because like you can already feel how the excitement dropped. But, um... What was I saying? Okay, the how I haven't felt excited in a very long time. So, as I'm getting ready, this song is by NSYNC and it's called 
better place. And this song has been on repeat ever since like I heard it because I'm like, I want to integrate the lyrics. I want to integrate the message. But some, I mean, okay, I'm going to read some of the lyrics because I feel like music is one of the ways in which God really reaches my head. <laughs> you know, he breaks through all the, the mental barriers. But anyways, it says, it's some kind of love. It's some kind of fire. And when I thought about like this verse, like this lyric, is it verse in a lyric? Verse? Um, fire. I'm like, I haven't felt like a fire in my belly since I can't even remember when. So I'm like, okay, let me continue this thing. <laughs> it says, I'm already up, but you lift me higher. And I still don't feel I'm at a place where, like, ideally I would like to be. But when I contemplated this verse, when I think of, like, where I was a year ago or where I was even, like, two years ago... Like, I definitely am a lot higher than I was back then. And I think this is a, a common, I mean, a mistake. I don't love the word mistake, but it's a common pattern that a lot of us have. We don't give ourselves enough credit for how far we've come. So I'm like, okay, I'm already up. Because, again, compared to where I was just a few few years ago, things are a lot better despite the loss and all that, but you lift me higher. Now it says, you know I'm not wrong, you know I'm not lying, we do it better. Um, when we're together, I think, I kind of took notes because I forgot to bring my other phone to look up the lyrics, but this is something that like I have created a lot of awareness around. Uh, one of the intentions that I set years ago is like, learning to do things with God because I just knew that whenever I partnered up with him things just worked a lot better and then it says I don't mind if the world spins faster the music is louder the waves get stronger I don't mind if the world spins faster 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 and I'm like whoa hold on here I kind of do mind you know I kind of do mind if the world spins faster because I'm still kind of like there, there's many things going on and I feel overwhelmed and I feel like I'm doing a lot of the process on my own and I'm like no I, I want to move slow please like I can't handle things going faster or things falling apart but sometimes like in the falling apart is like when they're kind of like being broken down so the new stuff can come in but like I resist it it's not my favorite part so I'm like oh this is interesting like why does this person <laughs> or like not mind that the world spins faster or that things get louder or that the waves get stronger but I'm like okay I'm gonna contemplate that and then it says just let me take you to a better place I'm gonna make you kiss the sky if you let me show you the way now hey bubs bub is trying to get inside the car now, one of the things I keep on asking God is like, show me the way, show me the different way. Because I think I mentioned this earlier where, well, it's probably going to be at the end of the video because it's an outtake. <laughs> but another message that I feel like I've been getting a lot recently is like, there's another way of doing things. And I keep on getting stuck to find Ajna. Like, I want to do things this way. Like, I've always done them this way. But the thing is, like, there's a different way. And like, for having a defined Ajna, I want to say that I'm quite open-minded. You know, there are other aspects of my chart that kind of help contribute to that. But there are certain things or certain things or ways in which I can see, oh yeah, that's a defined Ajna way of doing things. But I'm like, okay, God can make me kiss the sky if I let him show me the way. So, okay, God. I mean, I don't know what that means necessarily. Like, kiss the sky, imagine like going even higher than what I could imagine. But it doesn't necessarily sound super fun right now. But like, I can contemplate that and get behind that. If I let him show me the way. And then this is where it says, I'm so excited to see you excited. I'll take you to a better place. And baby, you can love me on the way. When we're together, you know we do it better. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. Because like going back to the part where it says, I don't mind if the world spins faster, the music is louder, the waves get stronger why wouldn't someone mind all of those things? Like, one, why do I mind them? And I know why I mind them, because control issues, right? 
and feeling overwhelmed and not trusting God, not trusting life, not trusting myself that everything is going to be okay. Even if there's a little, you know, downs and ups and like, you know, whole I'm not much into roller coasters, so, you know, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of rides. But I'm like, okay, what if all of these things that I'm labeling and judging as, like, not ideal can be seen differently? And they're, they're really not that bad, you know? Like, today, waking up super early to go to open house, and I, like, as I was, you know, going through <laughs> this process with them, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I think... It's going to be crazy, like parking and the walking and all that, like felt like a lot. So I'm like, okay, I messaged their mom and I'm like, what time are y'all leaving? Um, and I, I rode with them. So I'm like, okay, that's one less thing I have to worry about. I don't have to worry about driving. I don't have to worry about parking. Like, I'm just going to follow. It's like, she's got a third kid today, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to follow the mom. So as we're walking through the school, there's like outside there's this huge line and I'm thinking oh my gosh like are we gonna have to stand in line because like I'm already regretting having come like having said yes to this and I can't go home because like I don't have my own car but like it's okay it's okay it's okay let's just, let's just let's not freak out like there's four of us here like someone can go stand in line I'll go sit on the bench until you know whatever I had a good breakfast like it's gonna be fine so turns out <coughs> It was a line for the registration. Thankfully, the girls' names were on, like, they were assigned class classes and teachers, so we didn't have to go through that line. So I'm like, yes, thank you, Lord. So as we're walking through the hallways, I was having, like, little flashbacks of, like, when I was little and kind of thinking back to what that experience was like. And for me, like, it was always overwhelming. Like, I didn't love it a lot of anxiety, a lot of nervousness, but I never really expressed it. And on our ride there, like the girls started saying how like they felt nervous and I'm like, shake it out, shake it out. But now I know that that's one way to move the energy. But I thought it was so interesting how like they were vocalizing like, oh, I'm starting to feel nervous or I'm starting to feel this and, you know, being able to guide them through that. I was never like that. I learned and I was conditioned uh, to keep all of that inside of me so that I mean, not only, and also, it was also like the beliefs that I formed, like, I don't want to worry mom, I don't want to, you know, be a burden, or things like that. So, <laughs> we get to, like, we as we're moving this process along, we're working through, uh, we're walking through the hallways, and we get to the wing where, like, the fifth graders, the fifth grade classes are, and this is, like, her, her my little bestie's older sister, she's starting fifth grade. And as soon as we walk in to the fifth grade wing, they have like this little table with cookies. And I thought that the cookies were only for like the specific teacher. I'm like, oh my gosh, how cool is she? Like she went way above and beyond. And she's like literally like had cookies. But because I thought it was like only for her classroom or like, oh, let's not touch the cookies. But she's like, no, 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 no. This is for, you know, on behalf of the entire fifth grade classrooms, feel free to have anything you want. But still me, I mean, there were cookies and I kind of like been watching my sugar intake. So I'm like, I could do without a cookie. But little Bessie, she's like, I want a cookie. And she's like literally like taking her time. I thought she was going to take the whole entire cookie table. And I'm like, well, let's leave some for the rest of the people, right? And then she gets like a little plate and she gets two cookies if, if it had been me I would have been like no like don't take the cookies but I'm like this is interesting you know this is teaching me a lot so she grabs two cookies and she grabs a napkin and then the teacher says like there's a little there was a, this little cooler on the table and she's like there's drinks in there feel free to grab one and as little Bessie's like grabbing whatever she wants we're, we're like the rest of us are over here kind of like really can we just like have whatever we want <laughs> but we're not saying anything right but the teacher's like yes yes please like everyone's welcome like everyone's welcome have whatever you want and the way she said like everyone's welcome I'm like oh that's so interesting you know how conditioned I've been to like no like don't don't receive like because in my mind it's like I'm taking and taking can have like a very negative connotation but it's like it's receiving and like she wants to go I still didn't grab any cookies but I mean in retrospect maybe juice would have been nice but anyways there was a lot going on through my head so anyways we had to the fifth graders classroom and um their mom starts filling up the paper filling out the paperwork and I'm with the girls and we're just like you know talking and they had like um this Disney playlist but it was like 
Disney songs without lyrics. It's just instrumental music. So we're kind of listening to the to the songs, seeing which ones they are, if we need the lyrics to them, and things like that. And at some point, like little, I start to really notice little Bestie's napkin. And she's like just eating her cookies. <laughs> and I see the napkin, and it's this a butterfly napkin. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. I want one. And I wasn't super interested in the cookies, but like I really liked the napkin. So I'm like, hey, on our way back, grab me a napkin. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm not grabbing it. I don't want to get in trouble, you know. So she's like, yeah, okay. And on her way back, she didn't grab the napkin. So I'm like, no, I want a freaking napkin. So I ended up just grabbing a napkin. And I'm going to show y'all, like, it's the cutest thing ever. Like, it's like this little butterfly. And it's so interesting because, like, I've been seeing a lot of butterflies recently. So this is, like, you know, transformation and things like that. So <laughs> I grabbed, um... A little butterfly napkin on our way out of the fifth grade wing into the fourth grade wing. I'm gonna start wrapping this up. <laughs> okay, where was I going with this? Hold on, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure where I'm going with this because I kind of forgot, but we make it to the fourth grade section. We find a little bestie's teacher, which was her older sister teacher from last year and she's really cool like she's she's super tiny but she's got like this really bubbly personality and she had like um this um picture up on the on the like the board through the projector and as she, she was sharing a little bit about herself and one of the things that I read on there is that she plays the ukulele I'm like oh my gosh that's so cool like I've been like recently this is very recent like I want to learn how to play the ukulele so I thought that was interesting so while we're waiting for the mom to fill out the paperwork um we're just kind of like you know talking and and then eventually like the teacher brings out a couple of stuff that she forgot to put out and it was like these blocks and like the new no deck and, th and things like that and I sit next to, well, actually the girls sit down first and there was another little boy there and he saw that the teacher put out new stuff and he was about to go sit next to one of the girls. But little Bessie grabs the little stool and puts her hand on it and she looks at me and she's like, I saved you a seat, you know, and then I felt a little bit bad for the boy, the little boy, but I'm like, oh, it kind of feels good to have someone save you a seat. I felt like that was something that I didn't really get to experience growing up. So like, as all this is going on, like, yeah, I'm, you know, it's not my meet the teacher day, but I was really starting to tune in as to how like this experience now, when I'm not approaching it from a state of fear is actually not that bad, you know? So we're playing with the blocks. We're having the time of our life. And I tell her, you know what? I like your teacher way more than I like your older sister's teacher. She seems like really fun. And then she's like, yeah, I know, right? And she's like, um, her older sister's teacher seems a little bit mean. And then her sister hears that. She's like, what do you mean by that? And then we're like, oh, well, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. But, you know, I don't know. I feel like little Bessie's going to have a really fun year. I'm pretty sure the older one is too, but you know, it was a different vibe. It was a different vibe from the teachers. So this time, like it felt like the mom filled out the paperwork a lot faster. And I was really sad that we were having we, we had to leave because we were playing with like these little magnetic block thingies so we leave the classroom and we go to the lunchroom to pick up like their um car number tags because they're car riders and while we're there the mom has to go do something else so we stay in the cafeteria they have like this whole setup uh with like the pta and after school programs and all this stuff and i just thought like Oh gosh, like a lot of stuff, like a lot of memories coming up for me. <laughs> so there was this one table, like some tables had candy, but in my head, it's like, no, you're going to have to sign up for something. Like if you want the candy, so I was like, okay. So we, the girls naturally navigate towards this table that had like little toys and things like that. And it was like an after school program that was paid, but they didn't like, they were fine. They, they let the girls play. And there was another girl who had like this little slimy sticky hand and I kept wondering like where'd she get that you know so while we're at this table um one of the ladies offers the girls to like this little box with like treasures in it and each of the girls get to 
got to pick one treasure. I'm like, oh, maybe that's where she got the slimy hand thingy. But turns out it came from a different table because while the mom came back, I didn't realize she had come back. She's at this table for like an after school program. And when we see her, I'm like, oh, girls, let's go over there with your mom because that, that table has candy and that's like what I'm after, right? So we head over to the table and the the oldest asked the mom if she can have the candy and then uh, the mom says well like ask them I don't know and they're like you can have one but you got to play rock paper scissors for it and the girls thought that they had to play each other so they start playing <laughs> and they're like no no you got to play with like the guy that was tending to the table so the oldest one goes first and she wins on the first try and then the youngest one goes, little Bessie goes, and she loses the first round, but she wins the second one, and then she got to pick a prize, and it was the slimy hand. I'm like, oh, that's where they got it from, but I thought about, like, when I was little, if they told me you got to play for the prize, I would have been, no, what? You know what? Like, forget it. Keep your freaking prize. I don't want it, but it was more to, like, avoid the embarrassment or, like, putting myself out there, the fear of getting it wrong, the feel of the fear of failure, all these fears, undefined spleen, right? So I thought it was interesting how, you know, they took things so differently than, than the way I took them growing up because they were having fun, you know? And it's like, oh, this is interesting, you know? It's like you're playing for the prize. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, if they had lost all of them, <laughs> they would still have gotten something. But in my mind, like, it wouldn't have registered that way. So I thought of like, oh, okay, this is showing me more of like, how can I start having more fun? Because that's one thing that like, I've really been working on incorporating because after experiencing so much grief, like, you know, fun is not, I mean, it can be, but I didn't have the tools or knowledge to how to help me navigate, you know, that type of life situation. And now, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, it's going to be all when you go through a grieving process, it's, it, it's very sad, but now I can, I've learned to tap into more like moments of joy. And before I felt a lot of guilt about feeling joy. So I'm like, okay, I'm starting like, <laughs> even though like I thought, you know, oh no, it's interesting because like as I was thinking of like waking up early, that's the only thing I could think of, like how inconvenient it was to have to wake up early and all this. But I wasn't, I mean, in a way, yeah, I thought of like, oh, okay, I'm going to be missing out and spending time with the girls. But it was much more than that. You know, now as I'm, you know, thinking back as to how this is coming out, it's like the experience of having these memories of like oh yeah I remember that time when Jeannie came with us to meet the teacher and you know we did these things and it was fun you know so all this time I think I've been focusing too much on like what what am I going to have to sacrifice like what's the thing that's like ugh, like I have to do this thing like the sacrifice but with like this heavy burdensome energy <clears throat> And what would it be like if now I don't focus so much on the sacrifice, but focus more on the joy that comes from, you know, walking that path of sacrifice. And what I found, <laughs> and I'm going to contemplate this so that I can remember, is that the joy outweighs the sacrifice. And it's okay. <laughs> I think this is where I was going with this. Like, it's okay if the world spins faster, if the music is louder, if the waves get stronger. You really do get to the point where, like, it doesn't matter. Because just because the world is spinning faster doesn't mean that I have to spin faster kind of like another visual that I, I I feel like dropped in a few days ago was like standing very near like in the middle of a tornado but in a way like I was being tossed around with the tornado because I was so focused on it and then as I was because this was like work that I was doing around money like money feels like a tornado like I don't have control over it um I feel chaotic 
and I'm letting that like I'm, I'm putting money on a pedestal so to say money is my master in the sense that like it's dictating how I feel I'm feeling chaotic I don't feel safe I don't feel stable so that's kind of like the visual that that dropped in when I was contemplating this whole money situation and then when I realized okay my energy is all over the place with this money thing what if I just let the tornado be but I don't have to let that energy toss me around and then once I'm like receiving that insight I kind of the other piece that dropped into this visual was like God on a throne just standing there like solid so I'm like okay what it would what it, what would it be like if I walked away you know just a couple of steps away from this tornado and went and sat next to God and the verse that I felt dropped in was like be still and know that I am God and I'm like okay all this time where I've thought that I've been taking inspired action I can kind of now see that it hasn't really been inspired action it's been action that has been rooted in fear or like been initiated because of fear so what I'm going to practice now is every time I find myself you know starting to feel like I'm getting tossed around that chaotic energy I'm gonna go sit next to God and be still and wait and listen if there is an instruction and follow it when the instruction comes so kind of tying that all together I'm like yeah it is really true you can get to the place where you don't mind if the world spins faster and faster and faster because again just because you know things spin faster doesn't mean you have to let's say if they're not ideal but let's say on the flip side of that where like if things are getting faster or the music gets louder or you know the waves get stronger I think of like all the all the ways in which all of those things can be good and I think of fun and excitement and like with the waves for example let's say you're trying to surf but the waves aren't very strong like you're not going to have much fun surfing you know you kind of want and need stronger waves and obviously you know the extreme of that when the waves are too strong it's not safe to surf but even in those situations where life happens and we get we come across this challenge or the situation that isn't ideal and it feels it's like a super strong wave it takes practice and it takes faith and it takes like inner vision to be able to like not let those things toss you around to get to the place where okay it's not ideal but how can I not mind this because I know that I'm not doing it alone I'm doing this with God and when we do things together everything just works out better so I feel like that's a good place <laughs> to stop um, so yeah, that was kind of like <laughs> a, a summary, not so short, but there's a lot of stories in there, hopefully, <laughs> you know, something. At least they were amusing, I hope. That's why, at least I hope, like, like, I hope this was amusing. So that's what I wanted to share. I'm about to go inside and I'm probably going to take a short nap and then I'm going to get to work. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know what, actually, before I sign off let me go revisit this piece of like working as if I'm working for God because I don't remember if I shared this earlier but like as I was contemplating that um I was in the bathroom getting ready and I have been meaning to clean the bathroom for like quite a while now and I've done little bits here and there but you know not fully so as I was contemplating this verse of like do things with your whole heart as if you were doing them for God I looked at the toilet I'm like oh I should really should clean the toilet I'm like well, okay like what would it be like if I cleaned this toilet as if I were doing it with my whole heart because like God's about to come to my house and sit on this toilet to use it I'm like do I really want him using this toilet right now absolutely not like I wouldn't consider it acceptable you know so I like okay I started cleaning the toilet I'm like oh this is interesting you know I feel that energetic shift of like I'm I'm it's the same task that like I've been dreading to do for I don't know how long but now it's like there's an internal motivation there's the desire my heart's in it and I want to do a good job because I love God and I want you know 
to be able to give him to the best, like, give him the best of the best. And the thing is, like, in my mind, I can put a lot of pressure and be really hard on myself on what I think God expects the best of my best to be. But that's coming more from like a human perspective. Like the, the other part of that verse says, um, as if you're working for the Lord, not for human masters. And I think we're so conditioned to see how, you know, maybe bosses or, or maybe like even parents, they put high, really high expectations. I mean, I feel like that was my experience growing up as a line two. I've noticed how the way that I experienced the projection field was more on like the positive side not that it it didn't come with its trauma it just looked differently than let's say like the fifth line so I feel tend to experience more of the negative side of the project projection field as I've been able to see how like good behavior what good behavior looked like got projected onto me so from a very very small age very tender age very high expectations were placed on me as to how to behave, you know, um, how to talk to people, like always being like well-mannered, um, developed into like the golden child of the family. And it put a lot of pressure on me. So no matter what I did, there was always like guilt or me thinking, how could I have done this better? A lot of perfectionism. So Again, I know I touched on this before, but it's like reminding, because like the only thing I did this morning was clean the toilet. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get to the rest of it later, just not right now because I got to go. But feeling that shift of like, okay, doing this with all my heart, which I, that was something that like I had asked before, but it wasn't dropping in like it dropped in today. But I felt the difference of like doing things from the heart and have the heart move me. I'm like okay that's something I can play with I got it now so after that I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier like because um I woke up earlier than I thought then I mean I thought we were going to be leaving a lot earlier I actually had some time to um a little time you know before heading out and normally I would have gone back to sleep and taken a short nap but this time like I felt inclined to start doing a little bit of work before heading out and I was able to to get a few things done and I almost kind of like I had to stop myself because I still had to go pick up breakfast and you know I was it ended up being a few minutes late but like I was there in time for when they were heading out but I'm like oh it's so interesting you know how it shifted for I, I the moment like I start doing things from the heart things just flow easier and quicker and better and they don't feel so heavy it actually feels kind of fun um so yeah okay i think i'm gonna pause there for now thank you so much for watching if you have any comments insights any ways that you plan on putting some of this into practice feel free to comment down below i love connecting with y'all through comments um you have any questions requests for content or anything like that i also invite you to drop it down below otherwise thank you so much for watching again and i'll see you next time i'm in the car and like i wanted to film but i didn't want to go get all my equipment i wanted to film at the park but i'm like that just feels like a lot of work so we're just gonna do it at the car <laughs> And I'm trying to like find a comfortable setup and I'm like, oh, this isn't working. And then like one of the things that's been really dropping in recently is like there's always a different way. It's just like open your freaking head up, you know, so then you're like touching you just like scoot your chair forward. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs>